Hello everybody, I hope you all are doing well, and in today's video I'm going to be showcasing all the new content, including the new animals added to Update 9 in Prehistoric Kingdom. Now, this is probably the biggest update since the, in terms of content, this is probably one of the biggest updates since the Desert Update. Um, it adds a total of four new dinosaur species, and it also adds something else as well. Um, well, first and foremost, you'll notice that I changed the font here because now we have new fonts. We have a total of, oops, wrong way. We have the default font, which we all know and love. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six more fonts to choose from. These two are from the arid pack or for the arid theme. This one's for the tropical theme. It gives me like a Jurassic Park vibes. And then I believe the rest these two are basic and these two are modern. I'm definitely going to be using a lot of the modern font in like more realistic zoo builds, but for like fantasy builds, I could see myself using this or definitely if I ever do Jurassic Park style stuff, definitely using this one. But more than just a new font, we have an entirely new map. So this is Tanzania based in Eastern Africa and it is by far one of the prettiest maps I think in the game. And with this new map comes an entirely new biome. Um, this is the savanna slash grassland biome. What is it? Grassland? It comes up with sand, grass, of course, mud, and dirt. And this dirt has like this really nice uh, crack texture to it. And you can see that whatever you place it over, um, it'll appear under the cracks. So if we had like mud, for example, and then we added like the crack texture. I really like this combination, but you can see the mud coming through under the cracks. I think that's really cool. And then also, also we have a total of, actually, how many plants do we have? We actually don't have that many plants um, compared to some of the other biomes, but with this biome in particular, they have, there's quite a good selection. We have three variants of Acacia, American Tarwood, um, and you know what, why don't we just go ahead and showcase the plants. So we'll just go here. So these are our Acacia trees. I really like uh, this one right here. We have a little sapling. We have the American tarwood. We have this dry uh, digitaria grass, I believe. So we have like dry variants, and then we have the um, what is this? The moist variant. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, more like a um, a lush variant. We also have marula trees, which are really pretty. Um, and then we have some pampas grass, uh, classic from South America. And then we have the Trodia grass, dry, and the Trodia grass, like natural, or like, plump. Yeah, those are all of our main plants. And then we also, this was actually update, um, introduced in the last update, but we also have elephant grass. However, it's a, um, it's a gardening plant. It's not in the, uh, biome brush, but that's still nice nonetheless. Oh, excuse me. And now, let's go ahead and take a look at our four animals, which I think that's what everyone's looking at. We'll start from least to most anticipated. So, I made a quick little zoo. This only took me about an hour to make, but... So, nothing too fancy. I definitely spent a little much too much time on this, but how could I not? So, we now have new signs for each animal, and we were also given a sign for a zookeeper now, which is really handy. So, we can use them for scale, which I did throughout the park here. And for our first animal, we have Uranosaurus. So if we go down here, this is the, um, this is your, uh, information sign of the animal. And here they are. They're really beautiful animals. And also, the biggest thing introduced in this pack, oh, aw, so cute. The biggest thing to come to this pack was definitely the inclusion of swimming. When they do swim, that is. But right now, I think all of them are hungry. Let's see? They're all eating. <laughs> I love this animation right here, where he's like standing, using his tail as a counterbalance. It's really clap. It's really reminiscent of like one of those. Uh, aw, they sound so cute. By the long face, <laughs> even though it isn't quite a hadrosaur, Aranosaurus has a remarkably long hadrosaur-like face. The beak and snazzy little crest really complete the rest of the look. Thanks, Nigel Marvin. So. So we have a total of three skins. Um, this this skin is not sexually dimorphic, but um, the other two skins are. So this is a female and male variant. This is the male and female variant of that skin. 
I quite like this one a lot. It's very um bright green and uh very like colorful. And it's really fun to watch them. Yeah. But I think the biggest thing that's come to this game has to be swimming. And we're actually gonna go ahead and drop him in the water. Look how cute he is when he swims. Like look at that. Oh, he's like wiggling his little feet. Here, why don't we make this a little deeper for him? Not too deep, but like lower the intensity a bit. I think deep enough to work. Yeah, there we go. Now it looks like he's properly swimming. And we're gonna go ahead and find the pool out a bit more. But yeah, swimming is up to, added to the update, and our last animal is definitely the most fitting for this. But yeah. Um, so, Loranosaurus, you should be able to find in the Elraz formation, and it is a two store animal. So yeah, we'll just check this guy out while he swims, and then we'll move on to the next one. Look at that. I love how, like, the sail just sticks out. It's not too thin, but it's not too thick either. I think it's just right. Yeah. I'm interested that they, um, they decided to go with a uh, bipedal look for this animal. I think that is a uh, point of contention, whether or not this animal was a uh, quadrupedal or bipedal. But it does have some, like, uh, quadrupedal locomotion still. Aww. And they sound so good, too. They sound so cute. Alright, so that's our Ronosaurus. So, I'm going to one more quick look at our little exhibit. And let's move on to the next animal, which is Mutaburosaurus. And so right here, this is our um, sign for it. Oh boy. This is also our first Australian animal. Um, and actually... Ooh, ooh, look at that. So this is a, um, this is a melanistic Mutaburosaurus I got. But... We have these three skins. This one was based on the old, like, Tenontosaurus. But... Yeah. Also, at the moment, it doesn't have any um, voice lines, sadly. But yeah. So this uh this is a three star animal whereas Mutabers or sorry, Uranosaurus is two star. This is our um thing for it. I love their like snorting sound too. Oh look at them swim. Yeah, this animal is so gorgeous. I'm really happy we got this. And so we have three skins. Oh, actually, this is the only dinosaur where all three skins are sexually dimorphic, um, which I thought was interesting. Oh, look at them eat. They are so big. Like, what I do like about um, Prehistoric Kingdom is that you kind of get a better sense of scale for a lot of these animals than you do in, like, Jurassic World Evolution, for example. Um, I guess that's because, like, it goes for such a more, like, realistic zoo approach. Um, and then you build an exhibit, you realize, oh man, this thing is huge. Yeah, look at that. I love the um, introduction of like different uh, variations, like melanistic and albino and so on. But yeah, before... Oh wow. God, they sound so good. Alright. Oh wow, just look at that. Alright. So before... Oh, oh. Let's take a look at them swimming before we go. I think it has a similar swim animation to uh, Leoronosaurus, but yeah. Really great animal. Aww. Alright, moving on to our next animal. We have probably one of my favorites. The, uh, or it was initially my favorite. The uh, Carcharodontosaurus. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. I actually don't know why I placed. Oh, he's rolling. Oh my gosh, he is doing a little. Oh, that's so cute. Actually, interestingly enough, I don't think. Uh... God, the Kark has such an interesting roar, too. Jeez, he sounds like a maniac. Oh wow. And yeah, they do also swim too, but I don't think I made the pool deep enough for these guys. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and do that. Make a nice deep pool. And then see how they... Oh yeah. That's more like it. 
Hopefully he can get out with snow. Uh oh. Here, we'll go ahead and let's go to the Oh, like, we'll get a little deeper up here. And now we should be able to get out, I think. And then we'll just uh, smoothen this area out. Perfect. There we go. Yeah, it definitely has the, one of the best, like, large theropod roars in this game, in my opinion. Oh, my but yeah, just look at him go. Oh, beautiful. So yeah, every animal in the game can swim now. Big or small. And there's actually one animal in particular I think you guys are going to have a lot of fun watching swim. But... We're here for the one dinosaur that everybody wants to see, and it is the one and only, you're too close to the guest, Spinosaurus. While Tyrannosaurus is widely considered the largest predatory dinosaur in terms of sheer bulk, it's not the longest of them. In that competition, it's Spinosaurus who reigns supreme. Much of the bizarre body of Spinosaurus remained a mystery for many years. The original specimen was fragmentary and was tragically destroyed during the bombing of Munich during World War II. Fortunately, recent discoveries of more complete specimens have not only brought its peculiarities to light, but also provided the genetic material needed to perform the miracle of recreating it here in the park. Look at that. So yeah, let's take a look at one of the swimming in the deeper air and... Uh, let's see. Oh, and before we do that, I almost forgot, guys. Let's go back to our Carcharodontosaurus habitat. So this is the um, the sign for it. You can see... Yep. Beautiful. Like, this is uh, one of the female skins. And we'll look at the skins um, towards the end. Oh, is that guy like... Oh, he's just observing. We'll look at all the skins towards the end. Oh yeah, this is our Spinosaurus. And what I love about it is that you can see, um, for the info sign, it's a picture of the Spinosaurus swimming... Um, now, what's really cool about the Spinosaurus is that there's two variants of this. There's four skins. Uh, most animals usually get only, like, three. Um, and there's... But with the uh, Spinosaurus, it got four. Um, and so you have this one, where it's, like, these crocodilian bumps. And so you have two skins that have, like, these, um, crocodilian osteoderm-like scales all over its body. And then you have ones where... It has smoother, has like a much more smoother and possibly more realistic texture. I'm actually not sure. It's hard to tell with them what is and what isn't um correct with Spinosaurus, just because it's such a it's such an enigma. But yeah, I definitely want to see this guy swim some more. But yeah, let's go ahead and enjoy these guys swimming for a bit. Ooh. Oh yeah, and I picked this one because it has my name, except my name is spelled with an I. Um, not too easy, but yeah. Man, you can never go wrong watching these guys. Swim. It's probably one of my favorite things now, is just watching the dinosaurs or just any of the animals swim in this game. Mm -hmm. I really like the sounds of it too. It kind of sounds like a hippo mixed with a crocodile, mixed with a penguin. Pretty fitting. Oh yeah. Yeah, let's watch this one. Oh yeah, and look at the way that its tail moves. Uh oh. It's almost like a. It definitely looks really like crocodilian. I really love that. That is so cool. A little bit of glitch in there, but, you know, that's on me. Well, let's, check it, let's check this one out, too. Beautiful. And actually, I did a live stream earlier today, and I got, like, an albino and um, a couple of melanistic one of these guys. But yeah, all the Spinosaurus skins are really good. But yeah, it's just nice to have, like, a, um... At least some more, um, I wouldn't say entirely scientifically accurate because, you know, especially with the dinosaur like Spinosaurus, um, things are always changing. 
versus like Satakasaurus, for instance, where like we know almost everything about that animal, and we're still learning more every day, right? When just of his life appearance, we basically know like what it looked like. Whereas with Spinosaurus, our perception of the animal just changes frequently, but it's still um, a lot of fun nonetheless. It's great to see like a more um, um, modern uh, take on the animal for once. They also have some really nice land animations too, which are, which are fun to watch, of course. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Here. Yeah, let's move this one to land too. Let's see what happens. Oh, look how it sits. He's so polite. Oh, it's so pretty. Try to get another Spinosaurus in here. So let's go ahead and, as we're doing that, we'll look at some of the new we'll look at the animals. So we'll start with Spinosaurus. So we have Sobek. This one isn't sexually dimorphic. And now Spinosaurus, I think, is the is both Spinosaurus and Kark, I think, have um, only one sexual dimorphic skin. So we have Spinosaurus, um, Amit, Sobek, uh, Tawarit, and then. Happy, and then Happy is the one with uh, two. Uh, that's the one with uh, two sexually dimorphic skins. We'll actually create another one of those. So we have Spinosaurus, then we have Carcharodontosaurus, and this one is the sexually dimorphic skin. It's called Brackish. Beautiful. I love the female for the skin. What was the other one called? A Blaze. Got it. That makes sense. This is Harlequin. Well, this looks so good. This is probably one of my favorite skins as well. Alright. And then, of course, let's look at our Ranosaurus. We have Spectrum. And this is a two-star dinosaur. Then we have Chert. And then we have Tannin. And then we go to Mutaburosaura. We have Billabong. <laughs> this one's sexually dimorphic. Opal is also sexually dimorphic. And then, uh, Mukaite. I don't know how to say that, but this one's also. This is probably the most, like, um. This one definitely has, like, the most. I wouldn't say extreme per se, but, like, there's a very significant difference between the male and the female here, where it's almost like a completely different color palette. And then, and then, of course, these animals come with new dig sites. So if we go here. We'll see that for the Elros formation, you have Uranosaurus, and this is what would have been home to other animals like Suchomimus, Sarcosuchus, um, Ladurosaurus, I think? It's like a larger Iguanodontid. Uh, Nigerosaurus as well. A lot of cool candidates. I do hope more animals from this formation get added down the line. Um, then we have the Kemken formation, which is home to uh, Carcharodontosaurus and Spinosaurus. Um, and then we have the Winton formation for uh, Mutaburosaurus. Um, so yeah, we'll get another Spinosaurus, but we're also going to get a Argentinosaurus, because... Or sorry, that's a Camarasaurus. We'll do Argentinosaurus, because the, um, the swimming animation for these animals is quite interesting. So we'll go ahead and put a Spinosaurus here. Oh, this one has like a little more blue to it than the other one I have. That's okay. There's a like T pose animation they do that I want to see. Of course, with its stubby legs and stout proportions, Spinosaurus is not suited to rule terrestrial ecosystems as T Rex does. Instead, it presides over the aquatic realm. Its dense bones and paddle like tail provide stability in the water, while its long arms and crocodile like jaws are perfect for snagging and hauling gigantic fish to shore. Beautiful. 
it does like um so i like that it kind of gets on its fours that it gets on all fours when it does a roar animation i think it's really cool okay i'll clean up some trees mm -hmm. we might get rid of some water just so that we can see some more of their like land animations you know because there's one where like they'll do a nice um Kind of like a T pose. That's what I wanted to show y'all. There it is. As soon as I mentioned it. So majestic. gonna do the t-pose for us bummer let's try to get another one what's crazy is they have such a high like water requirement see when i got rid of this much water like now they're upset i'm like dang well also the the crowding for this exhibit is pretty high too that might be it Okay, let's go ahead and show y'all. So we'll get our Argentinosaurus. Her name is Eva. Ooh, is this like an albino one? Or it's like a leucistic. And then we'll set the depth all the way to six. Make it as big as possible. And then we're also going to make it a little deeper too. And then... I think that should be deep enough for an Argent. There it goes. Yeah, so even the largest animals can swim in this game, which is a lot of fun. Now! And I guess, like, at least until, like, aquatic animals come in, you can just throw a bunch of, uh, sauropods in here and pretend that they're your long neck please the source. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Who oh, no. knows? Yeah. So some things I do hope happen down the line is we get more, um, semi-aquatic animals. Um, I hope diving's added as well. And then as well as, like, a underwater viewing. Oh, yeah. Watch him swim into the sunset. Be free. <laughs> oh, I thought, um... Uh-oh, you shouldn't be there. And I like how he uses his hands to support itself, too. That's its eating animation. Oh gosh, I hope we get like um, I do hope they add a fish, like a live fish feeder down the line. I'm trying to get them to do the uh, animation I mentioned. I don't know if they will. Huh? You just sat back down, buddy. That is really pretty, though, I will admit. Mm. Alright. Oh, they're so beautiful. But yeah. Yeah, guys, those are all the new dinosaurs. Let me know what y'all think in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching my video. Have a good day.